Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a time lapse. Now, time lapse is one of the things that I found really, really complicated to get my head around at first. How many second intervals do you need for slow moving subjects or faster moving subjects? How can you calculate all that? So, this video is going to go through everything you need to know on how to create a stunning time lapse with Filmit Pro. Let's get into it. Now, before we actually set up the time lapse on Filmit Pro, you need to have a tripod, one that's pretty sturdy like this. And because it's not too windy today, I'm not actually too worried about that falling over. I think that would be nice and stable today. If it's quite a windy, choppy day, then you're more than likely going to need something a bit more heavier, a bit sturdier, maybe put some bags down to keep it steady so that you don't get your tripod knocking over in the middle of a time lapse, which will completely ruin it. So make sure you get something quite sturdy for the weather that you're using. And because I'm filming at 24 frames per second playback, I'm using ND filters. These are Moondog Labs ND filters, which I have stacked because it's so sunny today to make them stronger. That way I'll get a nice, clean, consistent time lapse. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to set up your time lapse. So first of all, we're gonna to go to our focus, which we want into the sky, because we wanna get the clouds, for example, in this one, we're gonna lock that focus. Exposure, you must lock the exposure as well, because if you don't lock the exposure for this shot, for this time lapse, you can end up with varying exposures throughout the whole shot. So if clouds come in, go out, you can have a really untidy, messy looking time lapse. So I wanna make sure that's locked as well. I'm happy where that is there. From there, we're going to go into white balance. So on the bottom left here where the colors mix, we're going to tap that. And we've got the white balance here locked for sunny because it is a really, really sunny day. If you go into auto white balance, similar to the exposure, it will just change throughout the whole shot. And if boats go past that kind of thing, it can really change everything. So we want to avoid that completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the sunshine one. Next up, we're going to go into settings. And this is where we're really going to start the time lapse. We're going to go into frame rate. And here on the top right of frame rate, you'll see we've got standard and time lapse. And next to that on the left, we've got all the numbers for frame rates. We've got 24, 25, all the way up to 240 frames per second. But we're not going to use those, so we're going to tap on time lapse. And you'll see those numbers now change to 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 5, 10, 30, 45 seconds, and 1 minute. These are your intervals. Now, what is an interval? An interval equals how many seconds per frame grab. So you're grabbing a frame every 1, 2, 3, 5 seconds, etc. Now for this exercise, I'm using 24 frames per second playback. So let's say with a one second time lapse using one second intervals, that will equal 24 frame captures. That in itself will equal and give you a one second of recording. It will take 24 seconds to record a one second time lapse at one second interval, therefore, because you're capturing one frame out of the 24 needed to complete a one second time lapse every second. So what about calculating how long you need to record for? Let's say you want to create a 10 second time lapse with 24 frames per second playback using one second and another time lapse using 10 second intervals. With a one second interval at 24 frames per second playback, you'll need to record for 240 seconds or four minutes of recording. With 10 second intervals creating the same time lapse, you'll need 2,400 seconds or 40 minutes of recording. One way to apply this to different numbered intervals is start off with this one second interval rule and it just times it by how many second intervals you're using. So for example, with the one second here, times that by three seconds. If you're doing a three second interval, five seconds interval, you times it by five. And then you can see here, times it by 10 to create your 10 second interval recording time needed. Now you can see since we've changed the frame rate to just time lapse, we've now got a different time code medallion. You'll see with the red numbers here that are zero, zero, that represents how many frames you've caught for your time lapse, how many you've recorded. So that'll go, if, for example, if your interval's one second, every second you'll see that go up by one. If you got it every two seconds, every two seconds, that red number will go up by one. And the numbers on the left-hand side, the white numbers, they all represent how much time you'll have in real-time footage when you play it back. So you'll know from that exactly how long your time lapse is going to be. And when the red numbers, that's going to show you exactly how many frames you've grabbed for your time lapse. If you're filming a long time lapse, you're going to be recording for about half an hour, an hour, especially on iPhones and the old Android devices. You're going to need a power bank of some sort so you can plug that into the phone. That way you won't lose battery power whilst you're in the middle of a time lapse. I wanted to take this second just to remind you to turn your phone onto airplane mode so you didn't get interrupted in the middle of a time lapse, particularly a long one that you're recording. Now here, I'm going to start off with a one second interval and I'm going to capture 10 seconds worth of playback. So I want to change this resolution first into 4K. The reason for that being is that you can then create dynamic zooms, pans across your image whilst you're doing the time lapse, and just generally create something a bit more interesting for the audience. So I'll show you how I'm going to use that later on in this video. But for now, let's record at 4K using 24 frames per second and a one second interval. As you can see, the red numbers on the right hand side of the time code medallion are going up every second because I chose to capture a frame every second. When this turns to 24, this will then give me one second of real time footage to play back. 
So you can see here that white number one is how long we actually recorded for in terms of what we'll watch back if I stopped it now. So to finish off the 10 seconds, you'll see here 24, it changes to 10. I actually recorded 20 seconds worth in the end. So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like in the playback now. As you can see with a one second interval, it looks really good. It's perhaps not as fast as I'd like, but it could work for a lot of people. So when people are just walking at a normal pace, one second interval can work quite well. Things move around a lot quicker. And you can see now the clouds, the shadows, everything's changing and you can create quite a nice hustle and bustle feel with this. But what about if you want to use a three second interval? So with three second interval here, let's press play and you'll see again with the red number here, once I hit record, that will change to one, two, three, every three seconds. So we've got one frame captured, two, three, two frames captured and so on and so forth until we get 24, which will again give us one second of playback time. So let's see how using three second intervals affects the footage from one second and play this one back now. As you can see with this, it creates much more hustle and bustle feel. Even when this path isn't that busy, it created a much more busy feel with the city kind of atmosphere and all the city buildings in the background. The shadows, the sunlight, the clouds move quicker and it times the speed by three. So you do expect it to be quicker and it just depends on what kind of taste you have on your time lapse. So comparing them side by side, you can see on the left hand side with the one second interval, it looks good, but on the right hand side with the three second interval, it just gives you a faster feel, makes things feel like the time is passing much quicker. So it's really up to you what kind of style you want to go for and what you want to apply it to and whether it suits your story or vlog or traveling video too. As you can see here on the shot from the train, it's moving fast enough that I don't actually need to have a high interval time. I just used three second interval for this. I could have used one, but I wanted to make sure that was a nice, fast, slick time lapse. But what if you want to film something that moves really slow? A subject like clouds. Well, for this shot, I used a rake to prop up my tripod, hence low budget. Don't forget to plug in your power bank as well for these longer time lapses. The last thing you want is for your power to cut out in the middle of a time lapse and ruin and waste all that time you spent trying to get it. And if you've got a sunflower pot that can help you out prop up your power bank without it falling off of the plug, then do that as well. This is the 10 second interval shot of the clouds. As you can see, it's really, really dramatic. It looks fantastic, kind of swooping over the rooftops like that. Something out of Lord of the Rings this wouldn't look out of place of, apart from the rooftops, I guess. But it looks really fantastic. It works well for vlogs, travel vlogs, films, documentaries, you name it, this will look great in it. And time lapses are really great ways to add something different to your shots. The five second interval works really well, but a bit too slow for the clouds. With this baking, it works really well too. Three second intervals worked really, really well for these uh, cupcakes. If you're doing something bigger, like a cake or something like that, if you're filming hobbies, you may want to increase that interval to something like five seconds. 10 seconds is probably too much, but five seconds I think could work really well for these kind of hobbies. Let me explain how I decide what kind of second interval I'm gonna use for my time lapse according to what activity I'm filming. When using a one second to three second interval, I would use that for something like people walking in the streets like I showed you earlier on in London, maybe sports, tennis, football, cricket, whatever, something like that, where people are using quite a lot of speed in their movement. Because it's already fast, you don't need to use longer intervals in between frames because that'll just make it look a bit jerky with a time lapse. If you use one to three seconds with sports activities, it'll make it look really slick. Also, if you're filming motorsports, for example, something like that, that's something again that's already very very fast and a lot faster than running or walking so that way you could use a one second interval if i'm using a five second to ten second interval i would use this for something faster that i can see with my own eyes moving so for example something like clouds like i showed you again earlier on that you can see moving but it is moving slowly so you'd want to use five to ten second intervals to make it more dramatic you can increase that to make it even more dramatic depending on what look you're going for, because again, this is filmmaking, it's all down to interpretation. For a 30 second to one minute interval with your time lapse, that's gonna be something that is really, really, really slow moving. So perhaps, you know, a plant growing or moving with the sunlight, you know how a plant kind of bends towards the sunshine? If you want to do a time lapse of a plant growing and moving during the daytime, a 30 second to one minute interval would work really well for that. You just have to remember that you're going to be filming for a really long time to get that time lapse, even if it's 10 seconds or 20 seconds of time lapse footage. So the three questions I really want you to ask yourself when you're about to set up for a time lapse and trying to figure out which intervals to be using are these. Can you easily see the subject moving, i.e. running, sports, that kind of thing? The second question to ask yourself is, can you see it moving, but is it extremely slow movement like clouds? And the third question is, can your human eyes see it moving at all? Again, going back to nature, plants moving, that kind of thing. If you, your own eyes can't see it moving, that's a good sign to use larger gaps of intervals, so 30 seconds to a minute, for example. 
Well guys, I hope you found this tutorial really useful and that you now feel comfortable in making a time lapse yourself. It's a really fun tool to use. If there's still a few things you find confusing, then do hit me up in the comments section below. I always get back to people as soon as I can. Oh, and if you enjoyed this Filmic Pro tutorial on time lapses, then do check out my tutorial playlist, which will be right here. So thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. Happy time lapsing. Bye bye.